The night guard at the FNAF 2 location carefully checks the vents to either side of their desk. Nothing. They go to sit when suddenly something emerges from the shadows of the hallway. Slowly and carefully, the guard sets the camera down and reaches for the Freddy Fazbear mask, putting it on before sitting very, very still. The guard removes the mask and begins to catch their breath when suddenly they hear a noise. The guard flees from Toy Chica, ducking into the other vent when... <laughs> Having somehow escaped the Chicas, the night guard once again finds themselves alone in the office. The silence doesn't last long, however. From the darkness, they hear someone... singing? Most FNAF VHS series take a lot of liberties with the game's story. Scenes from Squimpus and Baddington's tapes have become so iconic, it's easy to forget that a lot of them weren't based on anything from the games. The Fazbear Archives is different. It attempts to adhere extremely closely to the gameplay and lore presented in Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 4, and it's really a treat to witness the same moments we experienced in the FNAF games, only in much, much higher fidelity. Once there was this guy who watched a Theft King video and he hated puppies and kittens, so he didn't subscribe. Don't be like that guy. Subscribe. The story begins with night inspection. An employee at the FNAF 1 location goes to examine the animatronics, which stand deactivated on the stage. Freddy and Bonnie just sit there, but when they go to look at Chica again, Examining Chica more closely, she doesn't seem to respond, nor do the others. Hopping off the stage, they go to check Pirate's Cove for Foxy, only to find that he's gone. They glance at the parts and service room, but he's not there either. Where the hell could he have gone? <laughs> Hiding under the table, the employee awaits Foxy's arrival, when... Down. They push past Foxy and exit the room when... Having narrowly escaped the animatronic, the night guard tries to catch their breath as Foxy lingers outside the door. In the next tape, we hear an audio log recorded by the technician that Foxy just chased. I'm exiting behind this audio log for the next person that works here. Uh, let's just say it hasn't been an easy inspection for me tonight. They're not leaving, and I, I don't know what's wrong with them. They're almost like they're acting as if they're alive, as if they're screaming in anger. I know. I know that sounds crazy, but please believe me, this place isn't safe. I, I think they want me dead. We return to the night guard, who remains barricaded in the office. Upon recognizing that Foxy and Chica have left, they open up the left door and check to ensure that the coast is clear. They head down the hallway into the main room, but when they reach Pirate's Cove, Foxy is once again absent. Bonnie rolls up on the night guard, but he doesn't seem to do anything at first. However, when the camera swings back around, we can see that his head's position has changed. 
This seems to spook the employee who flees into the back office. Unfortunately, by now they've spent way too much time with the doors closed, and sure enough, the power cuts out. Desperate, they go to hide under the desk when... At this point, they've had enough, and they go to flee the pizzeria, only to find that the exit is locked. Confused at why Freddy has seemingly shown him mercy, the guard leaves the pizzeria, wondering. <laughs> Fazbear Christmas Show opens with the Freddy Fazbear Band performing We Wish You a Merry Christmas to a crowd of the pizzeria's patrons. Whoever is holding the camcorder turns around and checks Pirate's Cove, but Foxy seems to be deactivated for this particular routine. They glance back at the stage, but when they check on Foxy again... The person with the camcorder follows Foxy backstage, only to find him sitting there. Later that night, we see Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy disabled on the main stage. They once again check Pirate's Cove, but the animatronic is nowhere to be found. He took Foxy. It better not be for that twisted experiment. I must find out more. Finally, they glance again at Chica, illuminated by the candle on her cupcake, when... Dreamscape Prologue opens in what I can only assume is an Afton Robotics facility, perhaps the sister location itself. We see a computer boot up before the terminal reads, Initiating Simulation 1. Subject is in a deep sleep. The scene cuts to what appears to be the perspective of the crying child alone in the FNAF 4 bedroom. Back in the bedroom, the nightmare continues before Desperate, the child goes to hide under the bed, but it isn't safe there either. Emerging from beneath the bed, they glance around once more before... <laughs> Memories still absent, needs more time. As test 2 begins, we once again see a child in the FNAF 4 bedroom. They go to check the west hallway, when... Having narrowly escaped Bonnie, they check the east door and actually wander out into the hallway proper. Uh -huh. 
Fleeing back into the bedroom through the other doorway, the child dives under the bed before they hear a strange noise. In the final test, the subject is once again in the FNAF 4 bedroom, but things look darker and grainier than usual. They peek out the right door when... <laughs> they go to check the other hallway and... Finally, they check the east hallway once again, and standing there is a wish-granting magical unicorn. I'm just kidding, it's Nightmare Chica again. Back in the bedroom once again, they hear a strange noise behind them. Anyone familiar with FNAF 4 knows what happens after Fredbear's head appears on the bed. Fleeing to the plush trap hallway, the child finds themselves cornered. <laughs> Unfortunately for the subject, this is all some sort of twisted dream, and you can't die in a dream. They awaken in the bedroom once again, and we get one of the coolest scenes in the entire series. When the next tape begins, we see the usual initiating simulation text, but for a brief moment, it switches to initiating purgatory. The subject once again finds themselves in the FNAF 4 bedroom, but this time it's different. It's eerily quiet, and none of the animatronics seem to be attacking. They go to check on the East Hall, but when they open the door, static is briefly visible outside the windows. It's almost as if this reality is falling apart. Retreating into the bedroom, they check the West Hall, only to find the same thing. Whoever they're forcing these simulated nightmares upon, they really can't catch a break. <laughs> Narrowly avoiding the nightmarish monster, the child cautiously watches the West Door when... <laughs> 
fleeing into the closet. They wait a few moments before stepping out, but... The simulation continues to deteriorate. It's almost as if the subject is slowly dying, and the psychological consequences of that are manifesting within this simulated purgatory that they're trapped in. Whoa. Okay, that was awesome. The next tape, Happiest Night, once again shows us what appears to be the facility that operates the nightmare purgatory that we've seen for the last couple of tapes. It would appear that somehow they've been able to record what's been going on in the subject's dreams, explaining how we have access to these tapes in the first place, as well as why they're so creepy. The others are like animals, but I am creepy. The subject once again finds themselves in the FNAF 4 bedroom, but this time it's very, very dark. Suddenly, a shadow begins to emerge from the ceiling in the closet. Checking in the closet afterwards, they find that Nightmarion is gone. However, when they turn, they spot something glowing under the bed. <laughs> Fleeing into the hallway, the subject holds the door closed behind them. However, Okay, Nightmarion is not playing around. Or maybe they are, considering they haven't actually jump scared us yet. Regardless, they continue to stalk the subject before... It's almost like Nightmarion is using the subject to speak to whoever is running these ghastly experiments. It's almost like they know they're on camera. In the search, we see an investigator exploring an abandoned Freddy's establishment in the hopes of finding memorabilia that they can use for the Fazbear Frights exhibit from FNAF 3. Hello, this is Investigator Ted Stevens. I've just entered the old Fazbear's establishment. Seems like most things have been packed, but left untouched. Ted plays the tape, which depicts the animatronics performing the Freddy Fazbear's On Tour song, which also happens to be my favorite song. Hey, motherfucker, turn the radio on. Do the pizza shop with our Well, continuing their search, Ted finds an animatronic exoskeleton. Considering the history behind it, it's in great condition too. I 
wonder where they put the rest of the parts. Ted moves deeper into the pizzeria and finds the remnants of the parts and service room. Seems to be some of the old animatronic faceplates. Kind of creepy looking, if I gotta be honest. I wonder if I should call this in too. Might be worth keeping for the attraction. However, suddenly... Hello? Yo, that was definitely a ghost girl. Continuing their search, Ted makes a ghastly discovery. Holy shit. How could they just leave this here? It's in pretty bad condition. <laughs> Examining Springtrap, they notice that he appears to be holding something. Holding a tape. I wonder what could be on this. Why does it even have a tape in the first place? Some random animatronic standing in the hallway holding a VHS tape. Not creepy at all. As they continue to search the pizzeria, Ted hears a noise from behind them. What was that? Hello? Probably just a rat. With the mysterious tape in hand, Ted inserts it into a conveniently located VCR. In the aftermath of this tape, there would be allegations that Fazbear Entertainment was involved in covering up Ted Stevens' death. In the series' final episode so far, Dismantled Dreams, we see someone else investigating an old Freddy Fazbear location. Once inside, they push their way past a ton of Fazbear memorabilia scattered around the place before they catch sight of a bear endoskeleton. They go to examine Chica, who has seen better days, but thankfully doesn't seem to be moving. As they make their way into the back of the pizzeria, they find an arcade machine that's still active. That doesn't make any sense. Nobody is paying the electricity bill here. How could this thing be on? Upon activating the game, Ted finds that it's called Super Fredbear Land, copyright 1984, Fazbear Entertainment. As they begin to play, they discover that it's just a side-scrolling minigame in which you try to collect party hats as Fredbear. On their third attempt at the level, they reach a strange pink flower, which most FNAF fans will recognize as likely being associated with Elizabeth Afton, the daughter of the man behind the slaughter and the spirit possessing Circus Baby. The level ends when Fredbear reaches a stage, but things take a very spooky turn. Please help, I'm stuck. They think it's just a glitch. The Fazbear Archives is awesome. It provides some of the most consistently effective jump scares I've ever seen. To be honest, I'm not really familiar with series creator Magic, but it's clear that they have a really strong grasp of balancing the tension of scary scenarios with the release of big, spectacular jump scares. Make sure you subscribe to them. There are links in the description as always. It's really important to me that everyone supports the series that I cover on my channel because my videos couldn't exist without them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't be like that guy. Subscribe.